To promote my new flower shop, I had one place print my business cards, another print my brochures, and a third, my signs. Now my roses aren't red, my violets aren't blue, my geraniums look dead, and I don't know what to do. Staples can help your business stand out with signs, banners, and brochures that are a true reflection of your company. And now at Staples, spend $50 or more on print and marketing services and get $5 off your next in-store purchase. Now my business is blossoming and I'm spending less green. Exclusions apply. In-store only. And 6 18 Hey, we are back. Okay. <laughs> this is not cool. Let me see if I can get... I'm going to have to reshare the link. And let's play, go ahead and play a song.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. <laughs> you know, there's little glitches. I'm sorry we had those issues. I'm glad I was able to get things back up and running. And so here we are. You are listening to the Paige Roberts Show on Intercom Radio Network. If you're just tuning in with us, we had to completely shut down. But yeah, it's all good. We're here. And I'm sorry that happened. But I do have um, Krista back on the line with me. And we were talking to her. Well, we were trying to talk to her. <laughs> but I'm glad she took the time and and answer the phone and call back in. So, hi, Krista. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, Paige. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. And thank you for calling back. Well, I know I called you back in from the studio, so. <laughs> of course. But here we are now. So, you know, I don't know if any of the first part of that took or not. So, I just have to wait until all is said and done and go back in there and see if it took. But we'll we'll save um, your debut song and talk about it here in a minute. But okay, so usually how we start things off is um, I usually get my uh, featured artists or my singer-songwriters to tell our listeners about themselves. And I, you can usually start back however far you want or in the middle or wherever you would like to start and work your way on up into your music. Yeah, sure. So um, I started music as a way to express myself. My parents, they um, actually met in a band. So there was a lot of music in the home and a lot of passion as well. And they were also really involved in church. Christianity was very important to them. But they um, introduced it to me in a way that was very personal. It wasn't about, um, like, the necessarily the tradition so much or about the organization so much. It was more about, um, you know, do you like the Bible, the Bible stories? Do you like who Jesus is? And so from that standpoint, um, writing music and writing Christian songs was how I was able to organize my thoughts and ask all of my questions and kind of sort things out and um I continued to write songs. I started when I was nine, and I um, performed my first one in church when I was 11, and so it just kind of went on from there. Um, took music very seriously. I did also take piano and voice lessons when I was six, and so continuing piano, continuing voice, um, singing with my mom, singing in groups, um, singing at schools um, and church and things like that. And I was able to tour the world with a couple different choirs in high school and also in college. I went to school for my music education degree and um, continued to write, continued to perform. I taught for a couple years, and now I am full-time doing music, but definitely with a different perspective as being a high school music teacher. I've learned a lot, and so um, they, my students motivate me to do what I do, that's for sure. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, now, do they talk to you a lot? I'm sure they do. They talk to you a lot about your um, singing career and things like that. I'm sure it, it's a real close relationship with a lot of your students. Oh, yeah, definitely. A lot of close relationships. Like a lot of them, we're still friends now. And um, wow. that's just my teaching style. I don't. I don't think that um, it's about the paycheck. I feel like if you're going into teaching, it's because you really want to make an impact. You really want to be a mentor. And if they want you to be a long life mentor, then so be it. So a lot of my students, I um, am just a text away, just a phone call away. Um, I show up to their programs if they're doing something um, just to always be supportive. But that connection helps to, um, inspire my writing because I understand what they're going through now. Like me being their age, it was a totally different era than it is for um, all the stuff that they have to deal with now. So they helped me to relate and they helped me to kind of gear my message to help them out and give them some really practical tools with what they're dealing with. 
That's awesome because you know there's there's just so much turmoil in our world today. I just I just wonder what they are really going through. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. on a personal at a personal um, standpoint, you know, I mean, because it has to be hard on them. Oh, it is. It is. It really is. Because, I mean, and even then, we did have, we had peer pressure, but now they take their peer pressure home. Now they take their bullying mm, home. Right. Like, everything is right on their cell phone. And um, it's a whole new wave because it's like they can't get away from it. There's no safety zone. And now they have insomnia because they can't put the phone down. It's just mm-hmm. um, they're, doing, they're dealing with too much. They're dealing with adult issues because they have adult access. So um, my goal and uh, my purpose is to teach them how to make good choices and how to um, prioritize so that they do have these accessible things, yes, but I don't have to fall prey to them. I don't have to um, be pressured by what everybody else is doing. I can stay true to my guns and um, make myself and my life and my long-term goals a priority over what I feel right now. Yeah, and you, I don't know how you, (laughs) I mean, because you are so busy and then you have your (laughs) teaching, your teaching career and doing your singing and music and wow. (laughs) Yes, it's a lot. (laughs) It's a lot, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. And what's amazing, you know, I sit here on my shows and I wonder sometimes, but but the thing is, and I know you probably think, you probably say the same thing. And even back then, I didn't know what my journey was going to be, you know? And I'm like, well, I'm here. And, you know, that's the good thing. And I know you're a Christian and I, I can tell you're a Christian by your walk and your talk, you know? And I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. You know? Mm. Mhm. So and I you know, in the past I've been like where do I go now? Which way is my direction? Right. See what I'm saying? Mhm. Mhm. So now here exactly now here you. Yes. And so now here you are and you're in that spot in that position and I don't know. I mean, I don't really have to I'm not going to say think a lot, but, you know, I just know which way to go. And I just think it's awesome. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It is. It's really great. It's it's a relief that (laughs) growing up, you know, and you go through different experiences, you you learn from them and you're better because of them. And it helps you to um, make better choices when you're older. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well now, um, now your music. Now I know we played um, "If God Doesn't Want It" at the beginning of our other <laughs> on our other show link, but I, been, I guess I'll save it till now. And let's talk about that because um, that's usually what music is. It's, it's your journey walk. You know, it tells mm-hmm. your story. So tell us about that song. Well, I would definitely say the song is much more relevant now than when I wrote it, just because Mm -hmm. I actually wrote that song when I was 13. And I can't say that I knew that much about um, about what it really meant to want what God wants. But the older I got, um, the more I realized that um, I I can try to do things my way. I can think that I know it all, but ultimately there's a higher power that created this whole thing and obviously loves me to death. So if I just try to hear what he says and try to want what he wants, well then it, I mean, it just makes common sense that my life would be a lot easier instead of if I'm trying to work it out my own way. And so I've seen it, I've tried it and that's what the song is about. Well, why don't we play this song and then we'll come back and we'll talk some more. Sounds good. All right. So hang on, everybody.
should have had it, yeah, you're charismatic And I always want your will to be leading me Take away the feelings and the thoughts of me Thinking that'll surely be conceding me I don't want to do this alone Cause I don't condone the evil that'll prevent me from bringing me home I'm like a lamb to the slaughter Save me from my thirst to death Cause you seeking for that ever-living water Put a stop to whatever's not yours, Lord I'm only in it cause I wanna be on one accord I got the Holy Spirit in me, he's my shooting sword I know that death's not the plan that you score, so I know that you're the life giver Mercy and forgiveness for a low life sinner like me I don't want it if I know it's gonna be tempting to me Show me the path that you know what's only meant for me You are listening to the Paige Roberts Show, and we are broadcasting off of Intercom Radio Network and Blog Talk Radio. Um, I just shared this link out there, and so hopefully uh, people, because of our last show, see that that link will not work. So if you can find that, I just posted this link under the last post on my Facebook page. So... But we have been talking to Krista Dene um, about her music. And uh, now, and that song was If God Doesn't Want It. Now, Krista, that song has actually been getting a lot of um, publicity out there here this year. So uh, tell us about that. Well, it's been pretty exciting just because. Um, I don't know. It kind of came out of nowhere. We weren't really expecting to do a single per se. Um, I just remembered the song this summer and I asked my husband, Hey, can you, um, you know, give it a little bit more of a hip hop flair? Because again, I, I mentioned that I wrote it when I was 13 and then I revamped it again when I was 16. So those versions are very different and outdated. I won't tell my age, but they're outdated. So, <laughs> I asked him, you know, to make it more modern and um, what he thought about adding a rap in there. And so I went on tour in Florida. And when I came back, when I returned, I heard this song and it was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, that's crazy. We should, we <laughs> awesome. should push this. This is great. <laughs> so, so far, everyone that has heard it has loved it. And um, we're really grateful because it's not, it's not really us. It's, it's really obviously a God thing that just kind of allowed this to whole yes. thing to just fall into place. So we're, we're so happy about it. Really, really grateful. Well, and you should be. I think it's awesome because I have another singer songwriter and it, it just wouldn't be the same if we didn't have both the singer songwriter and their spouses because it just goes mm-hmm. hand in hand, you know? <laughs> Yes, and I, for me, definitely. I don't know if you, right? Um, I don't know. You probably know Eddie Mann. They're one, they are the other um, ones that he is Michael Stove, one of Michael Stover's singer songwriters. But um, right, it it just really shows, and you know, I'm like, wow. When you got things like that that work hand in hand together, like they're supposed to, and so you know, it's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's awesome. It's a blessing for sure. Now, do you work together all the time? Does he work with you quite often on your music? Yes. He does. He does. And it's a good thing, too, because, 
he's the only one that understands me. Like I kind of speak in colors Mm -hmm. or objects. I'm like, I want the blue or I want, (laughs) and he gets it. (laughs) So we work together and produce the music and he um, mixes it and then we hand it off to a master. So we're a fantastic team. He can't make music without me and neither me without him. So yeah, hand in hand for sure. Awesome. And does your hubby have a name? <laughs> or does he want he that does. name? He does. <laughs> His rap name is Young One, because um, our last name is Young. Um, right. And, but his, his, his um, legal name is Zakari, Zakari Cameron James Young, and he's from Bermuda. Oh, cool. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I just think it's awesome. And when I see when I see y'all out there like that, I mean, it's just, you can tell, but... Uh, you know, that's the way God wants us to be and walking in his light. And I like that. Yeah. And I try to do that myself. And people can tell that about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. It's so true. That's the real deal, you know. <laughs> if we can see, then then that's the real thing. I think that's how God wanted mm-hmm. it to be. To be impactful, you know, and to make other people yeah. say, hey, what do you got going on, you know? And then they want to be like you. And I, you know, I think that yes. is just so cool when when they want to follow you and and be like you. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> great job on that. Now, um, you, you are so touring. Much. Are you still touring? I am. It's been pretty bananas, actually. Um, I've had this weekend off. Thank goodness, my birthday's coming right. up, and we've been pushing the new single. Um, so we decided to take off for that, but honestly, right after this weekend, I'm in New York, so right back on the grind. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't imagine. I know my life, my, my business is pretty hectic, but my goodness, <laughs> I see y'all out there just <laughs> going all over the place and things like that, and I'm like, my gosh. <laughs> um, now, I did, know, I did read where you were, um, Working on something maybe for fall. Mhm. Yeah, I got a full album coming out. Sorry, awesome. say it again. Do what now? Sorry, did you, sorry, did you say something, Paige? I'm sorry. No, uh, uh-uh, but I, I think it's okay. awesome. But yeah, keep on going. Thank you. I'm really excited about the full album that's coming out in the fall. Um, it's self-entitled, and it's kind of like I I compare it to a storybook where you wouldn't just pick a random chapter out of the book and read it. I feel like it's a piece of art that should be listened to in entirety because um, it's pretty complex. And um, when you hear it from beginning to end, it will help you understand. So I'm really excited about the album coming out. Well, we are excited, too, which we're always excited when we see our um, artists out there and um doing their music and putting together their albums. And but you know, sometimes I know some people just do their singles and but you know, that's that's okay too, whichever way you wanna do it. But I think it's actually mm-hmm. cool when you um come in there and complete a whole album. But um now what were some of the what places have you liked touring, um, Krista? What are some of the favorite places that you have toured? Hmm. I would have to say New Mexico, um, not just because it's the farthest, but it was the most interesting. Um, the people, the way the town looks, because I'm on the East Coast. Um, mm. So I'm used to a lot of trees, a lot of foliage. Um, and that was just dry, <laughs> but it was beautiful. <laughs> I really loved it over there. So I think I would have to say that that has been my favorite so far. And then anywhere that has a lot of young people, I love doing the block parties that I do. I love speaking at um, different high school events. Um, so any combo of someplace far, someplace different, and where there's a lot of young people that are just ready for change, that's the ideal situation for me. Now, you actually have a ministry that you do or you work with, um, the jail ministry? Um, Prison ministry? Yes. 
Uh Um, Yes, I do. Every once in a while, um, just because it's really nice to encourage um, people from different walks of life and people that are in prison are no different than people that are seeking for something out here. So anytime I have the opportunity to um, go and minister and give hope, that's what it's really all about, just spreading hope. Um, I'm all for it, all for it, anywhere, anywhere at all. Um, what were some of your inspirations growing up? Ooh. <laughs> mm. Okay, musically or overall? Well, do both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, musically, <laughs> I would say Michael Jackson, Alicia Keys. Mary, Mary, as a child growing up. Oh, and you know what? Let's add Fred Hammond and Kirk Franklin, too. And Joe Sample. Okay, that's it. I'm done. (laughs) Growing up, growing up, I would say that's it. Now the list will be a lot longer just because I listen to a lot of different things. Um, But overall, inspiration, um, let's see. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, it's very rare that my inspirations aren't musically involved, but I will Mm -hmm. say they include um, Priscilla Shire. Um, She's a motivational speaker, and Joyce Meyer as well. They're um, just awesome. They're so on fire for what they do. They're very passionate. They're very real. They're very effective. And Devon Franklin, because I love his story, Um, they told him that he would never be able to work in Hollywood and um, a lot of naysayers, but now he is working on movies. He's actually Megan Good's husband, and he's still true to his faith, and um, he's preaching and he's speaking, and he's doing a lot. So um, those three people are my inspiration for sure. Now, um, you're doing everything you would like to do now. Now, is there anything maybe in – I asked my artist last week, I said, do you have a bucket list? Do you have something? Oh, definitely. Right? Absolutely. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That would include doing a tour in South Korea. I am obsessed Mm -hmm. with South Korea. I love the show. I love the shows, the music, the food, everything. I actually roomed with um, a a girl from South Korea in college because she was um, here to learn English. And I really fell in love with her culture. So I have to do a tour there. That's a bucket list. And any touring um, internationally, period, that would be amazing. I have seen a lot of the world um, with my choirs, but it would be so cool to do that with my music. And there's so much more of the world to see. So I've got to do that. Um, Definitely to win some form of award, either that's a Grammy or a BBMA or a Stellar or Emmy, any one of those. I'll I'll feel awesome. <laughs> and All right. Ultimately, I definitely want to open up my own art school. Actually, um, I don't think the teacher and the mentor in me will ever die. I want children to have an outlet to feel safe, um, and for it to be all about the arts: poetry, dance, um, writing, music. Obviously, um, just and we would create a uh, musical together. And we would do that every year, and I just I can't get it off my brain. So I really do believe that someday it's going to happen, and I'm excited for it. That's my goal. That's my end goal. Well, I believe it will happen too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank now, you. You're welcome. Now your um, single, if God doesn't want it, it has actually had nominations for lyric the lyric videos, but now. I'm, I was reading, too, where it has spent three weeks in the Beat 100 Top 10. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> when you so hear, um, do they tell you when they're going to debut your song? Do they call you and tell you, hey, we're going to play your song next? No, I don't know. I usually find out after the fact. Um, and it's quite surprising, actually, sometimes, especially when they add them to, like, random Spotify play- playlists. I'm like, oh, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I am totally unaware when it's played or 
when it's added to things. Uh, I just kind of find, or when it's nominated, I find out after the fact. I'm just like, wow, that's really awesome. So happy. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, I don't know. If, well, kids, well, I don't know. You know, I don't know if they could let you know ahead of time anyway. I don't know how their end works. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. But, but you know, Sometimes I see our singer songwriters out there when they they have their links, and you know, I don't know if the radio stations call them or whatever and say, "Hey, we're fixing to play your song" or whatever, you know. But yeah. um, <laughs> who knows? There's probably a, a you know what? Since the song is officially registered, it, it probably goes through a system. If I follow that number. Mm-hmm. And then I can find mm-hmm. out who's playing it when and stuff like that. I'm sure I'm sure that has to work somewhere else. Awesome. And you've done quite a few. So how many songs? Do you know how many total songs you have out there right now? Um, that I have out or that I've written? Mm-hmm. Well, both. Okay. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I have six songs that are out. And I have, and that's just, that's like out on a CD or something, not, that I've mm-hmm. performed because I've performed a lot of a lot more original songs are just not officially recorded for purchase or anything like that. But there's six that are officially out there for purchase. And then come next Tuesday in a week will be one more will be seven. Um, and I've written actually over a hundred songs, but I've wow. a lot of them and it's up, it's actually up to like 73 now. But well, again, I've been doing this since I was like nine. So right, there's a mixed well. bag of nuts, you know. <laughs> there's some good ones. And there's some not so good ones. So, but it has. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably say that, but I bet if you brought those songs out, you might be surprised. Who knows? Who knows? With a little revamping, right? Right. Um, let's see. Do I have? What do I have? I have. I surrender. Well, did I? I played that one already, though, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Um, do we want to play another song? I have you amaze me. Tell us about that song. Well, that's a good one. So I actually wrote that um, right after I graduated from high school. I was getting ready to go to university, and I was journaling and kind of just, you know enjoying my relationship with God, looking out the window, see the wind blows through the trees, out on my doorstep. That's actually the first lyric. <laughs> so it was actually mm-hmm. what was happening to me in that moment. It's a very visual song, um, very personal, just thinking not so much about him as like this crazy God, but him as like, wow, you're this crazy big God and you're still so personal to me. And that's why you're amazing. So it was a fun song to write and it was a fun song to record. And um, the people that played on it had a good time too. So it's definitely one of my favorites and it works great for crowds. It's very interactive. All right, well, let's play that and we'll come right back. You created 
are listening to the Paige Roberts Show on Intercom Radio Network. We are broadcasting live off of Blog Talk Radio. Our call-in guest call-in number is 646-668-8941. Um, we'll give a shout-out to Kent Brown. He's been tuning in, and we appreciate that. So we always like to um, spotlight our our listeners as well. Um, but if you want to call in, that is our number. I've been we have been talking to Krista Dene um, about her music and life in general. Um, now, Krista, I want to say this, but I know you I know you um, try to take time for yourself. I mean, how do you fit all that in? <laughs> Well, that's a really good question. Um, I guess I could say I've had practice over the years. Um, not like I'm a pro at it, but I've always kind of been a busybody. Even when I was very young, I was always taking a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, in high school, um, I was a class pastor for um, all three years of high school, jumping up to school president student association president my senior year while being the um, pastor of the choir while being section leader all these different things and when I went to college it didn't stop I added a part-time job teaching theory (laughs) teaching um, tutoring for these things doing lessons um, being in charge of this club um, president music club praise and worship team all this kind of stuff so I'm not uh, recommending that for anybody. I definitely um, didn't put myself first over those few years. But as a result of those experiences, I've learned the value of little things. Um, and that could just be something you enjoy eating, going to bed at a wonderful time with a lit candle. Um, please blow it out before you go to sleep. Um, <laughs> reading a book, doing some stretches in the morning, you know, anything. It could be something very simple, but just make sure while you are being busy and while you are doing what you love, it's got to be stuff that you love. Make sure that in those small moments, you are taking time to enjoy. Um, Even if it's just 10 minutes or five minutes to just turn off the car, park in a park and close your eyes for a second just turn your brain off. It's so important to recharge. Listen to the music that you like. Maybe watch a funny video that cracks you up or something. It's really easy to, um, I feel like most people are very busy to a certain extent, and it's very easy to lose yourself in Mm -hmm. doing things. So while you're doing all these things, don't forget, you're number one. If you don't put yourself first, nobody else will. You tell the world how they should treat you based on how you value yourself. So if you are, while you are doing these things, you are saying, I'm a priority. I'm going to take care of myself, even if it's a little bit, then do it. And don't be afraid to take a day off. If you just need a mental health day to just lay in bed or Mm -hmm. go to the park or something, that's okay too. You know, I mean, it's just, you have to take care of yourself first. Squeeze it in, make it work, make it work somehow. You have to cut something out. Cut it out, but there's only one you. It is, and when you're in a when you're in a spot like we are, and you're having to constantly do public relations, you're constantly having to do interviews. It's easy to get swept up. <laughs> I find myself saying, "Now you gotta have to slow down." I'm just now getting comfortable with where I'm at, so hopefully, I can mm. I can be you. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's not easy, but, but I mean, you it's know, it's a master. It does. But um I'm just now realizing that and I I know I spend every bit more I know it's more than an eight hour day in in even putting a show together and doing websites, doing posters, doing links, doing phone numbers and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. But if you don't do if you don't do for yourself, yeah, you will easily have a burnout. Mhm. Very easily, uh, very easily. Mhm. Now, um, and I've had my share of burnouts for sure. <laughs> definitely. I mean, 
tell you, and you know, I don't know when it's, when it has been since I have been on a vacation, but that might be here oh. very soon in the near future. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Now, I don't know. Um, I know there are some things in your life. You know, I know we all have trials and tribulations, um, you know, in our lives that we've worked through. And I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. I mean, there were, I know there were some points in your, and times in your life to where um, it took you a little bit of digging out. Would you like to talk about that? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, totally an open book just because why, why would I go through things if I can't help somebody else, you know? Mm-hmm. So I struggled with um, depression and anxiety for a very, very long time. And I would say that that was brought on by bullying that I experienced in high school. Uh, my freshman year of high school, just adjusting to a new environment was really difficult for me. And um, it got really dark in a point in my life where I was just like, you know, what? I don't think I don't think that the world would be upset if I wasn't around. I think they would mm-hmm. just be just fine. And then I wouldn't be in pain anymore. So I seriously considered it. And it's, only by God's mercies that he um, brought me out of that darkness. Um, I was tempted to overdose and I was able to not. <laughs> and um, it, right. took some time. it did take some time. Um, I did transfer schools. We decided that that was best for me. And um, I still struggled with it just because by that point, my self-esteem was so low. Um, I didn't know how to handle, um, well, first of all, I cared way too much about what people thought, so that didn't help. Um, being mm-hmm. ostracized and feeling like nobody cared um, was the exact, that was the just worst situation for somebody like right. myself in the past that cared so much. Um, and then on top of that, um, that just really affected my self-esteem because I was like, oh, well, they don't value me, so I don't value myself. And just taking on whatever they said, you're overweight or you're too dark or whatever, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to build myself back up. And it took a lot of time. Um, starting in my junior year of high school, I started to rebuild. And um, different things here and there didn't really help. Um, you know, you go through relationship issues and um, school issues and doubting yourself. It's just life. And Life and and, um, trials are a lot easier to handle and a lot easier Mm -hmm. to face head on when you feel good about yourself. And I didn't feel good about myself. So instead of um, me being able to kind of take it with a grain of salt and overcome, I took it all on my shoulders. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can't do this. Oh, yeah, I'm doing and and I mean, I'm doing all of these things. And I'm sure that in other people's eyes, it seems like I had everything together. But to me, I just felt like um, a jack of all trades and a master of none. You know, that's how I felt. And I think that a lot of the reason why I was doing so much was because I couldn't say no, because I didn't Mm -hmm. want people to be upset with me. And so um, it took some time. It took a lot of time. I would say um, about a year ago, I (laughs) am fully Mm -hmm. 100% unapologetically confident in everything about me, but that took a long time, you know? So, Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's any if there's any advice that I can give to anybody is hold and value your self-esteem like gold. It is more precious than anything in this world because it really, really influences how you approach life and how you deal with the different um, different situations that come your way. So no matter what anybody has to say, um, we don't have to believe it. It's an opinion. It doesn't make it truth. It doesn't make it fact. What you tell yourself, and of course for me as a Christian, what God tells me from his word, um, I am valuable. I am not a mistake. I have a purpose. I um I am all of these wonderful things because I'm made in his image. And once I was able to get that and apply that to every detail about who I am, I realized that, yeah, you know what? I'm not perfect, 
but look at the steps that I'm making. Look at how much right. growth. Look at the things that I'm overcoming and celebrate those wins instead of focusing on what I'm not, focusing on what I am and what I've become. And so that is the best advice that I can give to anybody. That's what I've learned. And for that reason alone, like the different stuff that we go through, they don't happen to you. They happen for you. They make you better. They happen mm-hmm. for your story, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Those are your stepping stones. And that's what I, that's what I usually say to myself. You use those stepping stones to climb up to higher places. And that's what they are there for. And we are glad you are here with us. Um, I know we're down to like 20 more minutes left let's see I think I have played everything I have one more (laughs) it's hard to find everything in my queue over here I think we have played played everything now are you playing um, are you playing every weekend or singing everywhere anywhere it has been, yeah. It has been every weekend. But again, I decided to take this weekend off um, to prepare mm-hmm. for here, the upcoming single, and obviously my birthday, because it's on the same day. Awesome. Yes. So happy birthday from Intercom Radio Network. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, now, do you have um, – oh, I guess we can talk about Michael Stover. Um, I see Michael out there. He, I know he's really busy too. <laughs> he's yeah, got a full he plate. Is. He's got a full plate also. Now, you know, and I ask my singer songwriters, you know, when do you decide? Which obviously you need um, publicist and promotion. Promotionalist is that a word? <laughs> I don't know that it is. Right. Right. So how did you, well, Mm -hmm. you're obviously, Michael is from PA, right? Yes. Yeah, he is. Um, What is it? Um, Pittsburgh. Yes, he is. But we appreciate, we appreciate. Right. Now, I know um, PA is probably pretty big. I don't, I don't know how big, I'm in Athens, Georgia, if you know where that is. (laughs) <laughs> probably not um, but we're like I'm probably about an hour outside I know you you know where Atlanta is <laughs> yeah. I would hope <laughs> I would hope so um, but yeah we're we're outside of there but um, finding a publicist and um, somebody that's dedicated like that you know that shows mm-hmm. a lot as well so I know, I know he puts together a lot of things, and he's he's uh, he always contacts me and says, "Okay, can we do this?" And then I'm like, "Oh yes, sir." <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I think I he's think he's about. Awesome. Mm-hmm. He is. He really truly really is. Um, getting interviews and things like that together, and then I know he has Callie, and they're expecting another child. In yes, December, so December. Um, oh, let me think of the baby's name. It's a boy, and I can't think of it. I, oh wow! Is it Josh, Joshua? I think is what that what they named their baby that they're oh, fixing to have. Sweet. I know it, Joshua and Kelly. I hope I got that right. <laughs> but oh, I think yeah. that's what they said. I wonder how she's gonna act to her new baby brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know right. she's so sweet and tiny. She's so precious. Yeah, but I think it's awesome. But it, you know, it's, they become family. You know, and and just like um, all of you that's out here with me, I can I consider everybody my family. <laughs> of course, you make connections, um, and you know we're, yeah. we're all family now. Yes, and we like, you know, we like to help out also, um, especially with promoting your music, and that's what the Paige Roberts Show is. Um, we want to help you succeed and uh, not just your music, but, you know, 
promoting your music and sharing your music as well as your um when you have concerts and things like that. So um yeah. We appreciate all of you. Oh well we appreciate you, Paige. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, you're quite welcome. Now I know tomorrow night we are back here at eight o'clock, same time, same place. We have poet Stephen Misher. Um he is Atlanta. He's actually an award winning um poet. So I think it's always cool too when we have our locals on. <laughs> Um, of course. We right. We are booked up. We are booked up through uh, up to October. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I'm excited. We have some big shows too coming up in June, so um we are almost there. Wow, this you know, this year has really flying by. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know I mean, people I, leave it's pretty much like June already. That's nuts. I know it. I know it. I was looking back at it over my past shows that I've had, and I'm like, it is really um, flying by. I mean, what's what's going to be next? <laughs> but um, anyway, but we do have, we do appreciate your. Um, most people call them hubbies. Is that what you call you? <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> short right but um we do want to uh thank him also for tuning in who knows maybe we should have him back at him on the show next time <laughs> hey sounds good to me right um i don't think we are friends on facebook that's another thing um now do you do do you have live shows on facebook I've done it once. I did a Christmas concert on live stream. And the other time that I did a live stream was when I um, did a countdown for the single release. And I'll be doing another live stream um, the 28th of May at 11.30 p.m. I'll be live so that we can bring in the new single and also my birthday. So it should be pretty special. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I like live streaming. It's fun. It is. I haven't quite mastered that yet. <laughs> I, I've tried it. A, I've tried it a couple of times, and I couldn't figure out how to get my camera turned around. But I think I finally got it. <laughs> you know, you have to flip your, flip your camera around where the camera shows you, and not the opposite side. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's the learning. You know, there's something coming out. Um, all the time, electronics, and that's that's yes. another thing. <laughs> now, how do so you true. how do you record your now when you do your recordings of your songs? Do you go to studio? Well, for the first EP, which were those earlier five songs um, from mm-hmm. 2016, I did do that with a studio. I did do that with an official team. Um, but everything since, if God doesn't want it, is just me in my little home studio with my husband and um he's the toughest vocal coach I could ever ask for and um between the two of us we get it done right at home now you have actually I know you were talking earlier about your travels I was reading over um your bio or it might have not have been your bio with your with your choirs I mean, you have been everywhere. You've been to Romania, Turkey, France, Spain, England. Wow. <laughs> yep, lots, lots and lots of places. Now, are you still living in your hometown? I am, yep, definitely still um, in the Philadelphia area. I mean, that's where my whole family is, so it just makes a mm-hmm. lot of sense right now. Now, when people people see you in, I'm I'm gonna say in the street, but you know when when you're passing by someone, I mean, do they recognize your music the way it is now? You're out there and you're you're really grasping the um, the singer songwriter world. Um, do you mind breaking down the question a little bit? When you're out 
in the street? I'm just going to say, even casually, do people recognize the artist? No. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I'm there yet. Um, maybe if I lived in a smaller town, that would definitely be the case. Um, I would say that in the church community it happens. It happens mm-hmm. a lot just because um, if I'm doing um, a concert at this church and then they were like, oh, I saw you at this church and I see them somewhere else. Um, awesome. so that happens. But in terms of like I'm at Walmart and they recognize me, no, no. <laughs> oh. But the day that happens, it will be the coolest. There will be a blog. There will be a blog. You will know. I will be so excited. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, we are down to like nine minutes left. Can you believe it? Um, mm-hmm. Once you get to talking, the hour goes by really quick. Um, sure is does. there anything? What do, would you want, if people hear your music, what do you want people to take away with your music to take home with them? Well, I would definitely say overall. My message is hope. That's what I stand for. That's what I do my public speaking on and my vlogs on and things like that. So hope with the H standing for health, O standing for optimism, P standing for power, um, you know, just feeling like you have power over your life Mm -hmm. and over circumstances, and experience, to share that experience, to share what you've learned. And um, overall, you know, I feel like that is what hope is all about. It's about taking care of yourself and it's about sharing it with others. And um, if it's through the, my internet presence or if it's through my public speaking or through my music, I really want people to feel encouraged like, hey, you can do this thing. Maybe there's some better choices that you can make to uh, make life more enjoyable, but make life enjoyable. You don't have to wake up miserably every day and just kind of live for the highs that Mm -hmm. may or may not come, you know, like make the most out of every day because there is hope. There is, there is a reason for you to be here. There is a reason um, for you to go what you're going through and people need your story. So be hopeful. Awesome. Well, I think we are going to close out. Um, I do want to thank you again for coming on and talking with us. And I'm sorry our little <laughs> our little board got messed up at the beginning, but it all finished out okay. And um, oh, it's all maybe good. by awesome now. Um, maybe by the let's see, it's already middle of, middle of the year. What do you consider middle of the year? <laughs> but maybe <laughs> about the time you are to release your other album, maybe we can have you back on. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hopefully next time it won't do that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I I think we'll so close cool. out here. But I do want to thank you again for calling in and coming on our show. And remember everybody to be back here tomorrow night, same time. You just have to get out there on our Facebook page. Oh, I, I guess you could. Um, before we close out, why don't you let everybody know where you're at on social media? Yes, absolutely. So um, lucky for me, I have a pretty unique name. You could even Google me and find what you need. So um, <laughs> C-H-R-I-S-T-A-D-E-A-N-A. That's Krista Dene. You can go on com. Make sure to um, write on that homepage, scroll a little bit, you will see an invitation to subscribe to the newsletter, um, which comes out once a month. There's going to be a free giveaway coming up. Um, You'll get to find out all the behind the scenes. You'll be the first to know about new music, new merchandise. It is so much fun. That's the best way for us to stay connected. And then, um, of course, social media, YouTube, there's a new video every week. Um, You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. And also on my website is a blog, which is called Food for Mm. Thought. Um, A lot of interesting ideas, um, motivational ideas um, to help you be the best version of yourself. So there's a lot of ways for us to stay connected right at C-H-R-I-S-T-A-D-E-A-N-A. Awesome. And now don't forget to our listeners, um, we have a new show out on Saturdays called 
your paranormal puzzle radio with host John Griffin the second. So be sure and check that out. And we're always looking for new um new hosts, new co hosts and things like that. So check us out on Facebook at the Page Robert Show or at Intercom Radio Network on Facebook. So we are gonna close out here and I think we will close out with your um if God doesn't want it. because uh, I don't yeah, let's close out with that, and we will see you. Uh, I always say we'll see you back on Facebook, man. <laughs> yep, right on Facebook. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, pretty, pretty much. But we are glad you were here with us, um, Krista, and we appreciate you too. It's awesome. Thanks again, yeah. Paige. It was a pleasure. All right, and that's it. A wrap, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night. I say see you tomorrow night, but <laughs> all right, here we go. Bye, everybody. If God doesn't want it, then I don't. I guess it just ain't for me. Hi folks, this is Mark Wilmot, singer-songwriter of the Redstone Ramblers, owner of Trademark Instrument Repair, and proud supporter of the Paige Roberts Show on Intercom Radio. Do you want that old acoustic to play like butter again? 
You want to get that stress you got from your dad hot rotted, or maybe you want to put a pickup in your banjo. You can contact me for all your TLC. I'll be there for your instrument when it needs me. You can check me out at Trademark Instrument Repair on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, and remember, support your local songwriter. Tunes that make you grin Our music's better than it's ever been So think of us when you need a show We're at WIRN Intercom Radio At Outback Steakhouse, we're grilling up our newest creation. It's one part steak and one part ribs. Two parts incredible. Only Outback can pair our tender center cut sirloin with fall off the bone baby back ribs with prices starting at $15.99. Try your ribs with our signature barbecue sauce or with our new dry rub or honey sriracha sauce. But hurry in, a combo with flavors this bold won't last long. Make dinner delicious tonight. Head to Outback Steakhouse at 3585 Atlanta Highway in Athens. Aussie Rules.